Just the first batch. And the second batch he had from 11 this morning. I have all yeah, different okay. spreading the slides oh, and we just use the slides because someone else needs to use the projector. So. I saw some food coming about 30 minutes ago. I thought it was yours. I said, oh, we had the food early today. But I'm it's not yours. <laughs> 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 
and God give us. Thank you. 
Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Everybody's hoping that. <laughs>
Someone thought someone else was doing it, and someone thought someone else was doing it. Nobody was doing it. <laughs> so I thought, and I said, where's my second stock? Uh, didn't you get them all? No. No. Uh, but all should be there. I said, I just gave everything out, and it wasn't there. Oh, it's still on the copier. This one Oh. Okay, they can make that. Mm -hmm. And I can let them make that many brains. You have one legislation missing. Yeah. They forgot to copy that one. start, but at least you have your notes in front of you, and you can write on the side. So I listened to what you said last week, and how I have structured this, as you can see, we will be go through these in conjunction with the law. Okay? So, when a person dies, he can die with a will or without a will. Oh, gee. What? There we go. What happened? Why he? He or she. He in law means he or she. Okay? If he's been reading since I was gone, he'd see. Everything says he. Okay? So don't take it personal. He means he or she. When a person dies, they can either die with a will or without a will. The whole process when someone dies is that that person's estate has to be administered. 
but it falls under what we call the law of succession. And that's why the question that you asked me last week when we spoke about domicile, and I said it runs through not just taxation, but it also runs through trust, it runs through probate, administration of the states, is because the law of succession also, because it's a private international law, runs through all of this. So it's common to all of those areas. But this is the administration of the estate of the deceased. The probate is the actual process you go through. So if you look at what I handed you, the process is called the probate rules. This is the process when you're applying the application to the court. This is the act. That's the law that goes with the rules. If you die with a will, it must be in accordance with the Wills Act. That's the one John is going to bring. Okay, so you don't have that one now. If you die without a will, then it's the Inheritance Act. And you want that. Just to administer, which is one of the functions of the personal representative, it would fall under the administration of the state's act. That's why you have to name. That's this one. See, it gives you no all executors and administrators. We got to go through that. If you die with a will, the deceased will appoint an executor. If you die without a will, the court will appoint an administrator. Okay, so the administrator of administration of the state governs what they do. So the first thing when someone dies, I should have numbered my slides, we could go to page two. The first thing when someone dies is you ask yourself, is there a valid will? That's the first thing. If yes, then you would follow testing succession. If I lose it, you can say, don't be quiet. Because it'll be hard to go back because you have to switch between the different legislation. So if you die with a will, then you die testing. Without in testing. executor or the administrator is collectively called a personal representative. That's what they're called. Where are you writing the book? Hmm? Put it right on the side. Put it right here. Oh. <laughs> Remember I said the executor is appointed in the will, and this one is by a court. Mm. 
executor is appointed by the deceased and is with. So the first thing you ask yourself is, is there a valid will? The next thing you ask yourself is, where are the assets of the deceased? A deceased can have lots of assets, but there are certain assets which are not included. So there are exceptions to the rule. First is joint properties. Joint properties has right of survivorship. Oh. Where are the assets? Mm -hmm. Page three, at the top. After that, you said, where are the First thing is that you ask if there's a valid will. Is yes or no? Right. Right? The second question you ask yourself is where are the assets? As the personal representative, you have to make sure you have all of the assets accounted for. I'm saying after you collect the assets or you make a documentation of the assets, you have to determine are there any assets that are excluded from the whole probate process? One is properties that are jointly owned because they have right of survivorship, which means that if she and I own a piece of property and one of us pass, the other one takes all. So they would not be included in the administration of the estates. Then he may have had some nominations. As you know, sometimes when people get older, they would have on a bank account and they put their child's name on that account. That also would not be included. But then it becomes a question as to whether or not the account was, the person was signed on just to facilitate that person's expenses, or at the time they, they were signed on, that it was their intention that if they pass, the account belonged to them. So sometimes you would have beneficiaries want to sue, to say that mommy or daddy or uncle and auntie never intended for you to have the whole balance. The only, your only purpose was there when they went to the bank, to draw the funds to pay medical bills or grocery. Okay? The next thing that is excluded is sums that are payable under insurance policy, because insurance policy follow under what we call nomination. And of course, property held by the deceased as a trustee could not be a part of the assets. So note that although there may be assets that don't fall under or don't pass under the personal representative, which means that he is not going to administrate them, they still have to be listed for inheritance tax purposes. There are two separate and distinct set of rules which ascertain the deceased assets. The succession rules, which determine what property passes to the personal representative and which they can deal with, and the inheritance tax rules, which determine the value of the deceased estate for inheritance tax purposes, and the amount of inheritance tax payable. So the two rules that govern these. So you have all of these laws, and then you have rules. And remember, each rule is different for each jurisdiction. Each jurisdiction has its own tax rules. Sorry, what is the what is the Inheritance, Inheritance Act. Inheritance Act. Once you are an executor, you can apply for a grant of probate. If you're an administrator, you apply for a grant of letters of administration. personal representative, whether they're an executor or an administrator, they have to collect the assets. The executor, because he's appointed by will by the deceased, he can begin immediately. The administrator has to begin after he's appointed by the court. The personal representative also has to Asking on the debts and the expenses of the deceased. <laughs> and he has to pay them in priority. And if you look at the act, the act gives you the priority to pay. Is this like related to um, publishing the, the, the papers? Notice to creditors, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm.
personal representatives have power of sale, and those also have priority over the beneficiary's claim. So someone can die with money, and you know that they have money, but by the time the personal representative put in the notice and looking for creditors, mm -hmm. and all of those are paid, you may end up with nothing. The assets must be distributed after debts and expenses have been paid. It is a duty of the personal representative to distribute the assets to those entitled. Estate accounts will have to be prepared to detail how the estate has been administered and the assets dealt with to conclude the administration. And so in the Bahamas, there is a form that you complete. In the act, in the very rarely the act, they have the forms. And in the probate registry, all the forms are there for you to complete. Personal representative function is he must get the deceased assets. He must pay the debts and expenses, and that, and that includes inheritance tax. He has to distribute what remains to those entitled. Now you will see in the Bahamas this same one about paid debts and expenses. You will find lots of people running to the bank to get mm -hmm. funds for burial. Mm -hmm. Lots, and most times they arrange for funerals that way exceed what they can get. Too much. Mm -hmm. No, we, we, they will give it to you. You can't get it. The law states how much you can get. So if you go and you you agree to for $12,000 funeral, right? So we'll give you $2,500 out of the bank account if it's there then you probably have to assign some of the benefits. If you are the person who's going to get the insurance or the pension, you will have to claim a portion of that to pay the rest of the debt. But what people normally do is when they do it, they do it alone. And so once that body hits the ground and that's a man seal, all other family members say, but you did it. You signed it. You paid it. Because we didn't sign. And they don't want them to come out of their portion. And so you incur all the expenses. There is no obligation. That, for the executive, there is no obligation that he has to say, consult or sit with the, those who entitle him and help him entitle him. He's only the executive. Yeah, but normally, but has, normally the deceased has, would have said what he wanted. Right, exactly. But yeah. he, and he wouldn't know that. Anything outside of family, that, they'll have their range. Family, he, he has no obligation to say, well, listen, this is the funds that I have, or the funds that we made. And this is the way I see it, the best way to distribute it. They normally have a family it. discussion. Because anything outside of that, then you pay it. Because I know every time there's a death in our family, there's always a meeting. And they say how much they're going to a lot for a funeral. So when my grandmother died, I think she, she had said she wanted 5,000. When we went to the funeral home, it's going to cost ten or eight or ten thousand to bury her. And so, all of my uncles and aunts signed the agreement to pay the difference. Versus when you decide, when you go to the funeral home, you want a gold one, you want a gold carriage, and you sign it, <laughs> then you pay for it. Um, the funds couldn't have come out of the bank. No, it's limited. And then again, remember now, I'm burying you today. You have to go for probate. That could take a while. That's the first thing. And then you don't know now. No, no. The bank account might have had 5000 in it. By the time you finish collecting all debts, it may be zero. Or maybe even more. You may have to sell some of the assets to pay the creditors. So you can't assume that because X mother dollars is in the bank, it's what you have to spend. So your burial expenses are lowest priority. Of course. You don't know unless you pay for it before. Because some people in the will, they'll tell you how much they've already paid for it. They'll tell you how much for their um, tombstone. Yeah. They will tell you how much for limousine. They'll tell you where they want to be buried. They'll tell you the words they want on tombstone. Some even write in addition to that, they'll do a codicil, which is an addition to the will, and tell you who to invite. Oh my goodness. Are you serious? Yeah. People yeah. do that. They tell you what to bury them in and all. 
Oh, yeah, people do that. Oh, yeah, people do that. Yes. That's the very last thing that you Exactly. So you stipulate what you want. And if I don't want you to come, I say I don't want you to come. But you don't have no control. But you don't have no control. But I'm just saying. But you can't control. You have to control it in the way. So. Where's my things? I need my wheels out. No, I don't want a projector. Since I covered it for you all, I gave it to the other lecturer who needed it. But I wanted to start this with the wheels out, hand in hand. So let's look at the requirements for a valid will. Because as I read it, I wanted you to look at the law. So you can write on the side or if you want to make some notes. Or you can live long. Wow. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> don't go, don't go, come, don't go. <laughs> this one needs, I need one chapter 116. This. Got me? And then I need a whole set of this. Most students can say. So copy all of these. Come here, one of the things. You never had interference again. No, it's not here yet. We may bring it up. 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 We may I sent them to Miguel already. Once it's in, it's been true. I'm going to wait to get it. You carry them out. Me. You can live long, eh? <laughs> I tell you, it's the same number in the machine. You know? Sometimes I end with one, sometimes I end with none. I have a question, Ms. Go ahead. Okay. That's good. I've noticed that um, you have some persons who leave their stick to their dog. Right? So, what happens? Yeah. No, they white. What happens in that case? Would the money go to the charity instead because or whoever keep taking care of the dog? Take care of the dog. So everyone starts waiting over the dog then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay, I have a real like, this thing you think right now. Why do you people kidnap dogs when you watch those movies? <laughs> okay, with the lady who they just found in the U.S. who has been dead all these years, and she had all these automatic payments set up, and they didn't know she was dead. At which point now are they going to determine that she, because she had like some large sum in her account, so if nobody knew she was dead, all these, all the payments were, were, were going through automatically. And then when the money in the account ran out, mm -hmm. you know the case is on, mm -hmm. it's on mm -hmm. in the news now. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, this just happened in the past few I remember the plane up. that disappeared over the air. Yeah, that, that Malaysian air I think. But now, legally, since she's been dead, she's been dead at least, what, five, six years or so? Yes, yeah, so oh, Something back. like this. So at what point does the law kick in to say, okay, maybe they need to put that money back to her estate or something like that? Because, you know what I'm saying? All these payments were going through. Yeah, but her neighbor was coming over to mow her lawn just to help keep the bush down. But they know the woman was dead. She wanted it. She didn't want them to know she was dead. But then where the was she? This is in one state. No, but where is she? Why did she? they know she was dead? She was in her carport or something. Is it a lady in the garage? Yeah. yeah. They didn't find her mummy five. No one did smell her. No one smelled her? No, I guess it's a kind of cold places. They found her mummified. They found her mummified. They found her mummified. They found her mummified. Yeah, she was dead. She was rocked up and something. I think she was in no, but she was in her car. In the car. She was in the car. The house, the house went into foreclosure after the payments ceased, right? Uh -huh. The automatic oh. payment ceased. The house mm -hmm. went into foreclosure, so the bank sent the persons to go and check out the house in terms of repair and then they found to sell out. it. Mm -hmm. And the, the repair people are the ones who found stumbled her. on her body. So once they determined the date, that she would have died, that's when all payments should have stopped. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah. And so all those who were mowing her lawn for five years, yeah. they would be the creditors who will come to claim their funds. But I think he probably just start. Yeah. They're they're already already huh? they oh, okay. oh, because they were she had like oh, money. Don't forget now. No one knew she was dead. No one right. knew she was and dead. And she, if she had entered into a contract with them. No, once they got them, no, they they now they're you're always doing the goodness of your heart and hope that every Saturday she'll throw you out a dollar or two. That's different. Yeah. When she stops throwing you, I know. I was like, that's just the weirdest thing. But I went to the plane because Miguel is flying out tonight. Oh yeah, you going to London? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yours. That's what we plane. Take your fine plane. The plane. Somebody know where it is. Take your fine. In the sea? There you find it. They say it's in the sea. The black box there, where it is? No, the ship. After it crashed. If it crashed, if that plane crashed, if it went down in the water. They still say they don't know where it is. If the plane crashed. They had two persons on that plane. They're not even sure who those persons are. Who would have, who would have, who would be dead if that's the case? Because there was stolen parts of the plane. Yeah. Oh, they tell you it's something like that. Yeah. That was stolen parts of the plane. They had two persons on that plane. They're not even sure who those persons are. Who would have, who would have, who would be dead if that's the case? Because there was stolen passports. Yeah. Oh, no. And these passports were stolen a number of years ago. So they don't even know who so these two individuals. So what happened? Well, they have to determine all this. The I believe so. They kidnapped the plane. If the plane crashed, they would have been. This could just be a... Yeah. No, it's this could just be a random thing. This could just be out of the blue, too. And then well, he has to decide. The blue, the no, I talked about the about about the whole thing about being kidnapped and all that. I mean, I think it just passed. They ain't kidnapped. They hijacked. Hijacked. I think, I think an explosion happened or something. I think you, it's terrible. Well, you're in the middle of nowhere. And it depends. The things are so advanced right now. Things are so advanced right now. Anything is possible. Yeah. But they are so advanced that they're like, oh, they're not saying you're The only thing they found so far is that they're not coming down. They're so far, but they didn't find it. Yeah, in two weeks, in two weeks, the plane will start to come up if it crashes. It'll crash. It'll take probably two weeks. It didn't crash. It didn't crash. Crash and the black box would have been given off secret. So the technology in that plane, so yeah. that plane ain't crashed. Yeah. Somebody, they can find it. Hijacked by the terrorists. Mm -hmm. Any terrorists? There may not be terrorists, they just hijacked it. They don't have to be terrorists. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the Bills Act. You have it now. Yeah. What? Hmm? You ain't flying, don't worry about the thing. <laughs> a will speaks from death. Okay? So when someone writes a will, they are speaking. That is what they want. One, as long as a person is alive, they can revoke their will and write a new one as many times as they want. They can alter it if they want to. Now, when you ask yourself whether a will is legally valid, let's go to the Wills Act, section 4. It states that the legality must be how old? Okay. But there is an exception to the rule. What's the exception? 40. You have to be 18 or older to write a will, but there is an exception. Right. No, section 40. Okay. Section 40 is exempt. Yes. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. No? Section 40. I have to be a sound disposing mind. Now when we speak of sound disposing mind, we're talking about whether or not the person had testamentary intention. This comprises three things. 
testamentary capacity, the intention to make a will, page six in the middle, and that that person acted of their own free will. No, in the notes. Okay, let me show you. In the Wills Act, section four, subsection B, is a sound disposing mind. Okay, that means that you must have these three elements in my notes for someone to declare that you have a sound disposing mind. You understand? You lost. You have to be over 18. That's the exception of section 40. You must be a sound disposing mind. I don't just walk up to you and say, you have a sound disposing mind, I know you well. You have to pass the test. Wrong page. You must have testamentary capacity, intention to make a will, and you must have acted of your own free will. Got me? Okay. Anybody else lost? Right page? Right Okay. Right here. This means you must meet these three. The three of them. Three? So you have sound disposing mind. No, testimony. 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 Testimony.
free will means it must be a voluntary act. There's no one forcing the person to execute a will. And of course, undue influence is when someone is, there's physical violence or threats of violence. Or sometimes people would allege fraud or they would allege there's a mistake. They can say you have two persons with the same name very close, Shalise and Shalisa. The name said there was a mistake because daddy always said I was supposed to get this and not you. So they would go to court, determine which one he meant. So section five of the Wills Act sets up the requirements for formality but in the legislation. And it says in order for a will to be valid, it has to be in writing, signed at the foot or the end by the testator or some other person in his presence and by his direction. Which means I cannot tell Sharon to sign my will and I'm not there. She can sign it on my behalf in my presence and I have to instruct her to do so. The signature of the testator or the other person is effective if, as far as its position is concerned, it satisfies subsection 3. The signature is made or acknowledged by the testator in the presence of two or more witnesses at the, at the present time. This is always where most of the arguments come in. That there were two witnesses, but only one witness was present, only one witness was looking, or one was doing something different. When you witness a document, you must not just be physically present, you must be mentally present. Each witness either attests and signs the will, acknowledges his signature, in the presence of the testator, but they, did, they do not have to be in the presence of each other as witness. Can a witness be sued for intentionally not paying attention? <laughs> no. Your question is just the validity of the will. Don't forget, now we want the money. Where at the time of the execution of the will, the testator was domiciled or habitually resident, or where at the time of his death, the testator was domiciled or habitually resident, or which at the time of the execution or at the time of death, the testator was a national. You have to conform with the law of the jurisdiction from where the person is from. A will executed on a ship or on a plane will be valid if the execution conforms to the law of, of which the ship is registered or most closely connected. And you know that's our main business now. You see them every two to three days, six to eight of them. So that means that all those persons are married under the laws of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Yeah, no, but there's, there's, a, there's a conjunction, that conjunction in there saying that. Or mostly co closely or, connected. So. A ship could it could be, be a, It could be registered, right? In the Bahamas, but it's only dealing with the Bahamas. Right. So it could be it more closely. It could be the Bahamas, the Bahamas, yeah. Or it could be on the Bahamian ship, but it never leaves in the Asian area or the Pacific area. Right. So it's where it's closely connected. Yeah. Which means also then that if it's two totally different countries with different. That's where that's where laws. that's when you go to court. That's where we make right. money. That's what I mean, different law. Because let's say if if you're talking right. about Asia, if you're on an Asian court compared to the Bahamian court, if you're connected with the Bahamas, the Bahamas law would be the one that would mm -hmm. be invited. So that's what you would argue. Right. If a will disposes of removable property, it is valid. If it accords with the country where the land is situated, and that's where the conflict of law is coming. In English law, the division of property is into real and personal property. Freehold, you know what I mean when I say freehold? No, no bond, no, no mortgage. No right, bond. it's free. You own all interests in the property. Freehold and certain interests in land and leases are personal property. But in conflict of law, the classification is movables and immovables. 
Immovable is land, including leases, and movable is anything else. The concept of domicile is central to private international law and signifies the relationship between a person and the legal system. The capacity to marry and succession rights are determined by a person's domicile. In English law, a person cannot be without a domicile, and he can only have one domicile at a time. Have to be, have to have it. Be going on. You gotta have a domicile. Where's your domicile? Watch this now. Huh? What's your domicile? I don't know what you're saying, I don't There are two forms of domicile. Domicile of origin, and there's also domicile of choice. Domicile of origin, that is what you obtain when you're born. And a child's domicile of origin is the domicile of his father, if he is legitimate, or the domicile of his mother, if he is illegitimate. The domicile of origin may be replaced by a domicile of choice. And to acquire a domicile of choice, two things are needed. One, there must be a fact of residence in a particular country coupled with an intention to stay permanently or indefinitely. Once a domicile is established, where there's choice or origin, it will continue until changed or abandoned. If a domicile of choice is lost before another choice, domicile of choice replaces it, then you revert back to your domicile of origin. Also in international matters where there is habitual residence, that is regular physical presence, which must endure for some time. It does not require continuous presence and continues during temporary periods of absence. So you see these people will be flying back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. For tax reasons, they try to establish different versions of domicility for tax purposes. Habitual residence in a country may be established if a person has an intention to reside there, which is coupled with a period of actual residence. So you see people who have the winter homes come for three months, four months, go back. And they go somewhere else for three months, four months, go back. So they have habitual residence. A person may have more than one habitual residence, like I just said, and a person's habitual residence may be different from his domicile. So he could have a domicile of origin, could have been born in France. He could have a domicile of choice in Canada. And he could have habitual residence in the Bahamas, in Brazil, all over. Nationality is a person's political status. That means you owe an allegiance to a particular country. Nationality may be obtained by birth, parentage, or by naturalization. A person could be a national of one country, domicile in another, and have habitual residence in a third. You agree? Yes. Okay. So for tax purposes, this becomes important. You have to know the difference between the three. In English, the general rule is that succession to an inheritance of movable property is dealt with under the law of the testator's domicile. So with nationality. Right? What's your nationality? Yeah. Yeah, baby. Mm -hmm. no. okay. Where's your domicile of origin? The bottom. Where's your domicile of choice? <laughs> I ain't established that one yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anybody get a house somewhere outside the Bahamas where they visit for two months? Let's say Miami then. Yeah. Okay. Your domicile of choice is Miami. Miami. Yeah. But you have an habitual residence somewhere else. Somewhere you frequent a lot. So is Miami. Say Trinidad. What do you mean? Love is the two nationalities if possible. I don't know, legal. That's what, citizenship. What the, okay, see the citizenship, sorry. How does that work? They benefit from both, they are back and forth. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why FATCA is coming and they'll be taxed. Okay. How 
<laughs> the dual? They would have been able to go to the United States and go to school free. Yeah. But they that's why they do it. That's why they do it. They have a that's why they do it. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the benefit mm -hmm. of that, right. mm -hmm. the benefit of that, say, if they have snowbirds, if they, have, they come out of the snow, the benefits for coming, I mean, they may have a home or, or rent or lease a condo or a brick or I think they get tax deduction when they buy houses. The first mm -hmm. thing when they arrive here, they buy a house. Right. But and that raises two. Yeah, that residents. raises two issues. Right. One, they are either seeking a domicile mm -hmm. or they are looking for tax, tax. reduction mm -hmm. or their money laundering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that comes to mind when you buy a house. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You either evade, you either you legitimate and you just want another residence because you like this place mm -hmm. or you want a tax reduction or you want to offload some cash because some of them come by boat they bring it in cash mm. or they have their private plane they bring it by cash so they or they money laundering the investment currency board um they would have to get approval right mm -hmm. to, to, to but they're the checking the way the money coming from but i mean wouldn't that be some sort of um, um criteria to determine whether to give this person the approval yeah they can tell you source of wealth mm -hmm. but you said due it. diligence, then I've got to check that. Investor board is not going to go and see. If he says, wow. he says, I'm buying this house, I know a guy who just bought his purchase his third house, that I'd be close to $15 million. Very young, he's 30 something years old. So when he comes and he says, I own for himself, and he's going to rent them out. No, he owns lots of companies. But I'm just saying, no, he's not a behemoth. But I'm just saying, when he comes and he said, I own company A, B, C, and D. And he brings you the financial. You look them up. You can call someone wherever he is. You know their company. You know they're making money. You take it. But that does not mean that he's not money laundering. You see what I'm saying? Right. So those are the things that you watch with what we call all high-end customers. You watch every movement in and out. And anything that looks strange. Anytime you go outside of what you normally do. So now he's purchasing his third house. So next thing you know, he'll buy an island. Mm -hmm. yeah, they buy an island and they hire behemoths just to watch to the watch guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, he's a automatically first number. Mm -hmm. when you invest Look at she's looking. Yes, people yeah. get paid a lot of money. They just sit there and answer the phone yeah. and make sure people come and mow the lawn and the light is on. Yeah. And when they job. come, they make sure <laughs> the grocery list is there. They have the job. Job. That's what they do. Yeah. 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 They manage, they manage, yeah. they manage what they call the estate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah they can pay a lot of money. Yeah, but but the, the, there's two things. I mean, somebody like this person you mentioned is coming in. Right? Mm -hmm. Our loss, if somebody's investing that, that kind of money into a home, right? it's only, from, from what I've seen, it's only sensible that if you're going to buy a home, first of all, if you invest so much, our immigration law says, you entitled the residence. Mm -hmm. So you just have to make the application when you make yeah, the application. Yeah, you got that from this first home. Right. Um, but, you, but even if you don't, you, you still get taxed higher mm -hmm. just for the fact that on that house uh, if you're not a resident. So number one, automatically they would apply just to avoid some tax, yeah. avoid some tax, mm -hmm. some level of tax in the country. But even the tax that they're paying here on those homes, it's less in the country where they are. So exactly. there is an evasion. Mm -hmm. And so they spend a lot of money buying a lot of homes. A lot. Of a lot. Cool. And then they go back and they rent them out. They may keep one for their personal use, mm -hmm. but they rent them out. Something and that's, ever see. yeah, and you don't hardly ever see them. And then it begs the question as to, if I have a house, I could sell that to Sharon or Lynette or whatever, say, for 500,000. But why I can sell it to you? And I could get 5 million? Mm -hmm. right. So everybody is saying that the property, the ownership of the property is leaving the Bohemians. Mm -hmm. You could say it's greed, but I mean, when you look at it, the highest I can get from a Bohemian is half a million. Mm -hmm. And someone from somewhere else around the world may offer me five to ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. And if I miss and say, I don't think that's enough, you may make it fifteen million. <laughs> 
because they're looking for what we have. They want anything that's underdeveloped. Mm -hmm. That's what they want. One of the guys flew from one of the keys, and he came to the bank, and he walked in the main branch, and he said, you got to go. He said, he'll call us from the key. So he can't, it's too much people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he came from Canada. <laughs> one hour. More people. He took his jet, and he go on. He said, it's not for him. Mm -hmm. He wants to stay on his key. Going back to habitual residence, mm -hmm. by law, is there a period for which you have to stay within that particular country, you know, for time? Like say, four months, you have to be in four months or five months or something like that? I think it's three. Two to three months. Two to three months. That's why they hop from place to place. To be considered that. Mm -hmm, to be considered. Because you remember when I got right. for taxes, mm -hmm. and his argument was how long he stays in the Bahamas, right. and his home is in the Bahamas, and he operates his business from the Bahamas in order not to pay all of the tax in Canada. Mm -hmm. Now there's something called a joint will. So you know you can write a will by yourself, but you also can have a joint will. You have a mutual will, and like I said, when we did trust last week, you could have a secret trust. So a joint will is where two persons execute the same document as their wills, and the document is treated as separate wills. So it's one document, but it belongs to two people. A mutual will is made by two or more persons dealing with the disposal of their property, following an agreement between them to make such wills and not to revoke them without the consent of the other. So normally this would be done by a husband and wife. And they agree that they did the, the whatever assets they have is to maintain their children when they die. And they dispose of those assets within the will. Which means that if I say I'm giving it to you, I can't go ahead after you die and change it to give it to somebody else. Revocation. That's Section 13 and 16. A will is revocable by the testator at any time before his death. In order for a will to be revoked, the testator must be 18 and must have mental capacity to revoke the will. Note that an exception for marriage which is called a change in circumstances after the will has been executed does not revoke a will. So you're saying, if I made a will prior to getting married, then I get married, that doesn't change the will? It's revoked. So the will is here. You have to do a new one. You have to do a new one. A brand new one. Mm -hmm. Going back to the joint will, right? Two persons executed the same. One document, document, right? Okay. And but it's treated separate. So say it's up between a husband and a wife. Mm -hmm. Normally it is. Uh huh. And the husband died. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it stays in the house. I mean, no. The husband dies, and whatever is in that Depends will, on how the assets are. Something to be done right. should be executed. Some people always have so assets the will in their husband and wife, uh -huh. have them all in their hands. Okay. So, right, survivorship. Okay. So, when one dies, all go to the next one. Automatic. Okay, that's yes, yes, yes. The bill is executed and say the husband. One died. document. Right. The bill okay. is executed. So they have a list of assets. So that means they own all the assets jointly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when one dies, mm -hmm. the next one gets all. Oh, the wife gets all. Or the husband. But I mean, I was just thinking if you want to the say to pay off something, something, to pay off kids or whatever mm -hmm. like that. When you say it's separate. Mm -hmm. You look at it individually. There may be assets in there that only belong to one person. 
You want to kill us? Okay. If it's only belong, if it belongs to one, you die. Then you that will be it. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. But everything stays at that. Okay. Okay. It's only in that case. Right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The most behind them. All out. Because I'm thinking if they are joint assets and the husband wanted it to go to a particular child, um, that it has to be his portion. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Mean like for outside children and stuff, eh? Yeah. Just for children outside. outside or something Just like that. Outside. Okay. <laughs> outside the wall. Ah, legitimate. Children. That's true. Because you got it. No, it's a legitimate thing. Very legitimate. Yeah. I didn't bring that one. I said you all would be overwhelmed. There's too many. That's the status of children out. Yeah. Mm. And it's right that one. So if you want, just put it on the top of your notes at the front. Mm -hmm. For this, you also need the status of children out. All of the children. How many people do you know? Okay. So if you get married, the village revolt. Look at section 13, subsection 3. Yeah, yeah. I'm reaching. You know. Oh, you're so fancy, though. Focus. You know, that was the note. You can't deviate a little bit on that legitimacy. Come on, this is speaking to women. Why are you saying that? From a will. We're in a will. Say this powerful village. That at the time it was made, the stater was expecting to be married to a particular person and that he intended that the will should not be revoked by the marriage, the will should not be revoked by the marriage to that person. Mm -hmm. Which means whoever he, when he wrote the will, let's say he wrote the will and he said that in contemplation of my marriage to Sue, mm -hmm. the will is not revoked if he marries Sue. Yeah. Okay, if he marries Amy, it is revoked. I hope he yeah. 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 marry Amy. I hope he something soon. Uh, if you want to revoke that. Revoke. <laughs> so, let's stand in your mind. will be yeah. revoked <laughs> by a later will, <laughs> by another document, <laughs> by destruction, or by marriage. <laughs> a will can be altered. Section 17. An alteration made before the execution of the will is valid. And you know what I mean when I say execution? Mm -hmm. Section, Section 5. Section 5 of the will is valid. When you sign it. Test data signs it or another person under his direction, witnessed by two persons. I, I, I yes. thought, I thought in our country when it was not well, isn't that they just have to be registered with the registry? No, no, you no, don't we don't register those. Some people do. just register the probate. No, the probate is recorded in the registry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We won't get there yet. <laughs> an alteration can be made before, and of course that is valid. And if the alteration is made after the execution of the will, alteration will be effective only if the alteration is duly executed with the formalities. Right, my picture? Yes. It's a he, she. Because see over there, he, he then ready to say, why is God a woman? <laughs> okay, so when a person dies in auto will, it is called intestate succession. So when a person dies, it is important to ascertain whether that person made a valid will before his death. The rules of intestacy provide that when a person dies intestate, his property will pass to his personal representatives who will hold it upon trust for those beneficially entitled. If there is no valid will, the disposition will be determined by the intestacy rules. And they can be found in the 
into arrogance. Total intestacy, or it can be a partial intestacy. A total intestacy <coughs> means that all of his assets have been disposed of, and partial means that he's excluded some. Section 8. Testing, the first thing you have to do is identify who are the surviving relatives. And in this instance, when the person dies in testing, this is very, 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 very yes. important because you don't want to exclude the what you call them? Mm -hmm. the illegitimate. Yeah, you don't want to. The illegitimate children? No, but I just wanted to let you know they're all included. <laughs> they're all the children. As long as they have the name, relatives. As long as they have the name, right. no, 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 no. As long as we call that. What? Yes, all equal. The fraternity DNA. All equal. So you better be careful when you write your will. You don't leave him if he has a father. Then when you when you pass, you leave the hand. You just spray it all over the world. The mother of the child, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, so now this one doesn't have a will. The next question comes to you after you've found out who are all the relatives, which means all children that he had wherever it is. The next important question is, does he have a spouse? Mm -hmm. Or does mm -hmm. she have a spouse? Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Common law, not to. Common law. Spouse. 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 Not me now. Not civil partner. I don't know the legal term. Spouse. But common law is another element. The law becomes known for civil partners. So not civil partners. Don't do it. Still there. See them civil unions. Who for you? Sorry. Civil partners. Civil partners, yes. That's what it means. Civil partners. Gender, not Yes. But I mean, there's no law preventing anyone from, if they write a will, to leave it to anybody. But the point of the civil partner is if the person dies in test state, they will not be entitled because they are not a relative. So law has to be passed so they will have equal rights. <laughs> I don't want you to write with me like Fred and call it the Christine Lumpy. I'm just saying on that. I'm saying on that point, I agree. Do you see any problem with that? So, I have You die and you leave them in your villa, and you don't get the house. The family, the parents, the house. We don't have a kind of time. Huh? I'm even the Caribbean. They should be the person. Common law, but. Okay, so, but civil partnership coming. Get your crown. Get your crown. Oh, now it's civil partnership. Partnership is the same time. Okay. Oh, but they would have to have this custom. Oh, the civil partnership. They love a civil marriage. They love a civil marriage. So that's you said that's different. Common law. You made this the same. Fred probably already signed that agreement. 
No, no, no. It was signed by Ben Shivago, signed with WTO. That is, that is, that's yeah, how it is. Yeah, so all of those in the middle. Look out. Lenny March, Lenny Bean, Ross, as well. I am there's also a when I say sound is posing mine, mm -hmm. yeah. and it means all these different things you have right, to do, yeah. so it'll be just a word. Right. But that word means yeah. some different yeah. things have to be done. That's all. Right. right. Yeah, lesbian. So it'll give them a right to get married. LGBT. It'll give them a right to get them a right to get married. They can't get married now in the ship's trials. Gender. Lesbians. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. Out of the human waters. But they have to be close to the state. They don't all state recognize civil unions. I thought he listed I mean, all of the homosexual, all the top ones, yeah. all. They put yeah. on their page. Front page, 20. Front page. They now they're trying to leave. Only 20. They're trying Russia to leave the country. 200. 200. No. no. They call that discrimination. What wrong with you? Russia? But look what Russia did. We need to put on a class of fifth about discrimination. No discrimination. They, they don't know what they name and obey. I don't want to call it. Oh, it works. It works. It works. It works. It they want to impose this dummy. I have to accept it, bro. My two sons. <laughs> you can't speak for your two sons. Exactly. Oh, they have to make their own choice. They are not 18. Don't He's growing up and in, growing in a different culture. <laughs> Watch the television. <laughs> Watch the TV. You're an adult who pass over it. They see it. My little nephew was seven. He makes these little comments and does these things, and we have to tell him, don't do that. He does things that those people do. I know it's on. And he gets it from TV. Yeah, yeah. because he wanted to go to school with some girl saying something that he said, I should expose my things to this boy. What are you talking about? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Every, every yeah. television show? Yeah. Everyone. And they call it now, what do they call it? The modern family. Modern family. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's just called the modern family. Some wrong with me. And they adopt children. I like that show. <laughs> That's why they want to if a decree of divorce has been pronounced before the intestate date, death, then the spouse is not a surviving spouse for those purposes. So, when you're divorcing someone, you know there are two stages. Mm -hmm. so you need to know what you better. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have that final decree, she'll be entitled. In some jurisdictions, it's all. In the Bahamas, it's 50%. I think we should lobby for more. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get on. So who is entitled on the intestacy? Let's go to section four. Subsection four. Page five. It says the residuary of the estate. You know what that means why it says residuary? After debts and expenses. All the funeral expenses, all of that. All right, so let's say, if he dies and he leaves a husband or wife and no children. Section four. Section four, page five of the inheritance act. Inheritance act means intestate, no will. So, if you leave a husband or wife and no children, the one that survived gets all. If you leave a husband or wife and one child, then it's 50-50. If you leave a husband and wife or wife and you leave children, the spouse still get the half. And the other half is split between the children. So remember now, before the law changed, who got the money? The oldest son. So if he leaves children with no husband, 
is distributed between the children. And if there's only one child, that child gets all. If he leaves no husband or wife and no children, it's distributed between the grandchildren. There's only one grandchild, that one child, grandchild gets all. So in some instances, some people don't write a will. You see what I'm saying? Because the law is not clear. If you have no spouse, you have one grandchild, no children, the automatic gets. No one else entitled to it. It's not like before when you know everything will pass. To the one. To the one. Right. And so it goes straight down. So that's why you see some people really don't write a will. Because once they read the list, they know exactly who's getting their box. There's a special right applying to spouses. The spouse is entitled to a life interest in the matrimonial home. And of course, if you have children who are in college, children who have mental disabilities, or if you as a spouse feel that your husband, what he has in the will will not take care of you, the way in which you are accustomed to, getting your hair done, your nails done, and your spa, you can go to the courts and you can ask for additional funds. And the court will determine what is reasonable. Okay? And that's section 12. You like that one? It's when you get a nail done. <laughs> I have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like you know there have been cases where wives kill their husbands, right? Oh, so, so, <laughs> and, she got moved from the honeymoon on honeymoon <laughs> proof. You know, like, I did. Yeah, yeah. 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 So That's cool. I wouldn't want to know, right? What that happens to no the love. money? What happens to the money? Let's say the wife starts five years or whatever. That's rough. You can't get it. But in the will, she's supposed to get it. No. Yeah. Hold on, I need to see what's going on. So let her unfollow the review. So if the spouse goes to, if the person doesn't leave a will, it just acts like. Follow the rules of investigation. So she can't get it. She shouldn't get it. Can the found guilty. And and some. What is it when they commit suicide? Like the insurance doesn't pay out or anything, right? Yeah, insurance doesn't pay out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You don't kill yourself. You don't kill yourself. No, you don't kill yourself. So a lot of behaviors around they're angry. very angry. Yeah. Especially if they had insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are killing period. themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's I think that's... I think it's like two years before, I think within two years. If you commit suicide within two years. I have a new policy. Yeah, 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 yeah. A new policy, yeah. but after that you can commit suicide. Oh, Jim. 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 <laughs> Without going into too much detail of all the different issues that can come about with the construction yeah. of the will and the questions <laughs> on a person's mental capacity, we know the person can die with a will or without a will. Mm -hmm. So when the person, when the person dies with a will, they appoint an executor or an executrix. Mm -hmm. If they don't and they die without a will, then the court appoints an administrator. So we go now to the process that we call the probate. So let's go to our probate and administration of the state. Sorry, I didn't find a black man. I wish it was a woman, but in here. I'll know for next time. I'll try to find some women. Okay. After the testator's death, the personal representative will need to prove the testator's will, if any. Prepare the appropriate oath form. Prepare the um, tax account. Administer the estate. And prepare the estate accounts, showing that the estate has been distributed to the beneficiaries. 
Points to the representative to obtain details of the deceased debts. If the deceased had bank accounts, shares, points to the representative must obtain the exact values by writing to the various institutions. And nothing for any more, the stock of letters, so people ask them about accounts, so people don't know. Let's be blank. If you don't know, if you don't know, that's it. That's it. You're going to ask everyone. Come on, you think it's talking about this, you know? Yeah, but. Just double check it. I don't mean you're going to like it. Stop doing 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 it. Stop so what is a grant? It is a court order, and it is evidence of the personal representative's title to deal with the deceased estate. So whenever someone comes to the bank and they're asking about the balance on a, of an account, we normally ask them to either you have either have the authority. So sometimes if they don't have the probate, but there's a will, they will bring the will where it says that they are appointed the executor, mm -hmm. and they will bring their. Um, identification, mm -hmm. make copies of that, put that on the customer's, the deceased customer's file, mm -hmm. and then we would say, yes, there is an account here. The attorneys can write in, unless they're actually filing the probate themselves. Now, on the, just on, on the banking side, right, um, all, let's say one of your clients passed away without a bill, and they had, let's say, a mortgage, um, the first number one or something like that. Mm -hmm. All of those stuff are insured. So y'all ain't looking to go after their estate for nothing, right? Why? That's clear. Y'all, y'all have insurance on all those stuff that y'all are shooting to that client. Y'all still going after the estate. Mm -hmm. Depends. Just to cover the balance. No, you And remember, sure cover all that. And remember, sometimes when even if someone build a house or someone, they may just build a house and not the the balance of the loan. So the balance of the loan of the company, the estate. Yeah, but you don't know, get mortgage insurance. Sure. That's right. What's the insurance, insurance for? Uh, no. I, I, I can't figure it out. You have the policy for life and death. And you have the policy against incidences. The <laughs> <laughs> one for life and death is the right to be insured. Right. 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 It has to be enough to cover the mortgage. But you don't need that anymore. It's always the same. You don't need life insurance anymore. Because if you pay down the mortgage, no, the balance should be the same. But they ask it for it. When they stop. When they stop. I know they don't. Obviously, they don't. The disclosure don't. Don't what? Which require life insurance. Life insurance. Life insurance. Life insurance. To get a mortgage. It cancels it. First care of you does. Oh, if you, if the bank has yeah. yeah. okay. I'm yeah. surprised yeah. that happens. Yeah. But what kind of collateral are they asking? Walmart? They asked for some other kind of collateral? All of them. No, no. 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 Life insurance? Do you have it? So you have a lot of people, husband and wife? Right? And the husband dies? Right? And the wife? The bank is calling her for like the last six years. And she's ducking. Six years. Six years. She's actually ducking. The bank wow. is calling her. She refused to answer. She will not answer any letter. Uh, Until we can put the sign on the house. Good. It's for sale. <laughs> and she decided to come and she asked him why. What do you mean why? You had no life insurance. Exactly. When the husband died, the mortgage was still there. Mm -hmm. The mortgage is so high now she can't pay it. Mm -hmm. And she's retired. Wow. She never answered any of the calls. That was based on banking. Never came in. Then. That, that, that's now. what happened because of them. If you can't get out a mortgage, your husband and wife taking out a mortgage right now. Both that husband and that wife individually have to have insurance individually mm -hmm. to be able to cover that mortgage. Both of them. Each one. That's why I'm surprised by what you're saying because I know that they are both together. I'm telling you to spend. Go. I, 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 that's what yeah, we that's want. You that's what we want. If that mortgage is $500,000, they cut it on the note. I have a rate of 30% they cut for the rest of March. Yeah, but you don't have to pay it that's what two people are looking at. And sure. First care being required, like if that that's why they know that. Dollars. I need to have five hundred thousand dollars insurance. My husband need to have five hundred thousand dollars insurance to cover that mortgage and get that note. They use that money to get insurance. That's what I know. I'm very surprised by that. I'm very surprised by that. I'm very surprised. 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 I'm very surprised
and but if she did not have the not safe to cover that restaurant. Yes, Scotia. Yeah. Yes. So she says Scotia. I don't believe that. Uh-uh. Scotia. They have life insurance. Scotia. Scotia. You think Scotia has life insurance? Wow. Because I know what I'm saying is like going more than it was covered. And it was that. Because you can get it from the bank. Yeah, you get it from the bank. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
giving and receiving of receipts and notices, taking court proceedings, and signing a contract of land. Administrators have no authority until the grant is obtained, and the grant does not relate back, and the grant does not relate back to the date of death, except to recover property that was wrongfully dealt with between death and the issue of the grant. So the powers begin on the date when the court signs the letters of administration. So what's the maximum number of persons who can apply to administer the estate? How many people? Four. Hmm? How many? Four. How many? Four? Four? I think. It's four. You like that number four. The duties and liabilities of personal representatives. The main responsibility in administrating the estate are they must take reasonable steps to collect the assets, reasonable steps to collect money due, they must pay all the funeral and testamentary expenses, they must distribute the legacies, and they must complete the administration and distribute the residuary estate. Mm -hmm. Personal representatives are personally liable for loss of the estate resulting from any breach of duty they commit as the personal representative. The breach of duty can occur where there is an omission to safeguard the assets, maladmission, misappropriation of assets, or breach of statutory duty of care. A personal representative is liable for his acts or omissions. A personal representative has the power to employ agents. He can delegate authority. He can sell, he can appoint trustees, yes, he can postpone distribution, he can ensure, and he can deal with the estate. So that's part 10, section 62 through 75. Personal representatives are in a fiduciary position, and they must act with the utmost good faith in relation to the estate. Are there different types of grants? The only person entitled to apply for a grant of probate are the executors who are being expressly nominated in the will or impliedly nominated. An executor's appointment may be implied where the will shows an intention that a particular person should form the activities. Executors, like if they put in the will that my good friend will go and collect or pick all my grapefruits in my farm. So it would give the document would give the intention that that is the person they wanted to execute their will. Executives may be appointed where the will appoints someone to nominate an executor or where the court has power to appoint a substitute executor. Letters of administration with the will annexed. An application for this grant is appropriate where there is a valid will, but it is not possible to make a grant of probate in favor of the executor. For example, the executor has not been appointed, or the sole executor is a minor, or the executor has died before obtaining the grant, or the executor has failed to appear to a citation, or an executor has been, has been, not been, passed over by order of the court. So let's look at the types of grants. <coughs> the names I just gave you are sections. That's part four, section seven through twenty. And I forgot to put you this slide. Look at part six. When a, a foreigner owns property in the Bahamas. They will have their will probated in the country where they live. And if they have property in the Bahamas, they will send it to the court registry to have it resealed. That's the resealing. Resealing of foreign grants. Now the different types of grants, like I said, you could have a grant for a limited time. This is where the will states that the executor is only to act during the infancy of my son. It's just for a particular period. 
limited period. It doesn't go beyond. Or you have a grant limited to purpose. So you have an executor, you go, you have an executor, but within it, it he has to go for grant just to do a particular purpose. You have a grant that is limited as the property. Or you could have an administrative concerning not administered goods. And this is called a, uh, what do you call it? The bonus non. This grant is required to complete the administration of the deceased estate following the death of the soul or the last surviving personal representative. So let's say David appoints Sam to be his executor. Sam proves David will, but dies before the administration is complete. Sam has appointed Leslie as his executor. Leslie proves Sam's will, and by doing so, automatically becomes executor by representation of David's. Leslie is able to complete the administration of David's estate. That's called the chain of representation. So what if Leslie had renounced before taking the grant? What if Leslie had died before taking the grant? What if Sam had died in testing? Then there wouldn't have been a chain of representation. And a grant of the bonus none would have been needed to complete David's estate. Because that means that there is no executor. Aki Davis renunciation and revocation. Aki David evidence. This is where the registrar may require further evidence. So they in the registry they do have forms and in the back of the act they have forms. Aki Davis of two execution. A caveat. This is a notice entered at any probate registry to prevent the issue of a grant of representation. We don't have much of that. The book is very small. Half ah, this page. A citation. These are documents issued by the probate registry, and they are used to give a remedy where a person initially entitled to take the grant refuses to renounce. A renunciation. A person who is entitled to a grant of representation may renounce his entitlement unless he has lost the right to renounce. An executor loses his right to renounce if he intermeddles in the estate. And once you intermeddle in an estate, you are then called an executor to some thought. A potential administrator does not lose his right to renounce if he intermeddles. A renunciation can be retracted by order of the registrar. Now a grant can be revoked. Normally, this occurs by the person to whom the grant was made was not entitled. Where a person thought to be predeceased is subsequently found to be alive and better entitled to the grant. Or where the grant was made, like when people in the Bahamas, a people were missing. Mm -hmm. I see. Where the grant was made despite the entry of a caveat where a fraudulent application was made by a person with no right to the grant. That happened all the time. Where a grant was made even though contentious probate proceedings were pending. Where a subsequent will is discovered. That happened all the time. Where the will is found to be invalid after a grant. Or where the personal representative becomes mentally or physically incapable or disappears. Or he just wishes to retire. Now I mentioned earlier something called passing over. <clears throat> this is where the person entitled to the grant, if it appears to be necessary or expedient to appoint as administrator some other person than the person who's actually entitled. And when the court exercises this power, it can appoint anyone. And this normally happens in two situations. Where the person entitled requests the appointment of a nominee, but because he's not interested, or where the person entitled is unsuitable for that office. And there are different um, grounds for unsuitability. An executor does not taught. It means an executor, as a result of his own wrong, intermeddles with the estate as if he were an executor or administrator. 
So what, what is actually meddling? Go about selling other people's property, paying debts, <laughs> collecting debts, yes. Carrying on the business of the deceased. More or less like impersonating. Acts not amounting to intermeddling, acts of charity, acts of humanity, and acts of necessity. The effect of being an executor that's on tour is that such a person becomes liable to creditors and beneficiaries to the extent of the real and personal estate coming into his hands as if he were an executor. Gee, lady, you all need today. Death and taxes. No, the food is delivered. He's bring it. No, but it has to come first. The other class came. Be last. Before you got here, eh? Just about here. He said we can be last because he got to come back up himself. He did exercise. Death and taxes. He may be falling on the steps. Nice. Best. What do you say? You don't want to hear that. This side of the need to hear. No, you don't want to hear that. They have been taxes. So what to do about tax and benefits after death? After death, there's a lot to manage at a distressing time. You agree? Yes. It's not time to be mourning and mourning. However, it's important to deal with tax and benefit affairs as soon as we can so that you can receive any money you're entitled to and pay any taxes on time. And sometimes time scales are short. So in the Bahamas, when someone dies, is there any tax we have to pay? Do you have any tax to pay when we die? I am not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to copy. Could you all get off the website? Oh, yeah, and I be the survivor's benefit. Um, I wanted to copy that for you all. Yeah, that comes up automatically. Add back now. Don't he reconsider it after he taps the web shop? But VAT will come probably at a high, at a higher rate because the lower rate, the money that they're expecting is no longer there. I don't think they're going to tax corporation. Oh my goodness. No? I don't think they're going to tax corporation. That coming next. Oh, no, don't forget that. The 15% is based on not taxing the web shops. They, and they have calculated and forecasted and estimated that the collection of taxes will be X number of dollars. It won't be. That initial money from that is long gone. They're now investing in the real estate and selling homes. That's a different business. That's gone. Yeah. So yeah, what I'm saying yeah, it's not right there because it wasn't legal. What I'm saying is that money they expect to get from gambling, and that volume is not there anymore. Back to, uh, back to the original thing, real property tax. Yeah. So, oh, they got the money all over. Now, nah, better they will bring it back. Yeah, now, better they will bring it back and drive this economy. They probably have to give them incentives. Yeah. Yeah, but they have to do more because so much money has gone. And I think they'll only bring it back if they agree they're not going to tax it. You see what I'm saying? The money that they made. They are already taking the money out of the Bahamas. Oh, you know what that is. Right. That's what we're talking about. And I can understand. Right. But I'm saying that. Look at it. Look at it. And ignore us. The economy now is not moving. So the only way we could get any jobs is if they create businesses. So which means that he's saying bye. Huh? Yeah, but I'm saying now, so they're yeah, saying yeah. that they're going to tax the web shop. Mm -hmm. yeah. The income from the web shop or the money is, is not even, is not there anymore. Yeah. Not, not that volume, not the figures they're talking about. No. They'll only bring that money back if they give them concessions. Yeah. That's, 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 that's some serious concessions. Serious but otherwise, the economy will not grow. Yeah, that's what's gonna more homes will be lost. Mm -hmm. More jobs will be gone. Mm -hmm. more. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's the depression coming on. That's the only place you taxed it two years ago. I need to go learn how to fish in culture. Because if you if you a person who is not interested in gambling, you won't. And if you decide you like when you go away, it depends on where you go, you may say, Hey, this one day, let me go in there. You say I only spend fifty dollars, only spend a hundred dollars, that's it. Everybody will not the whole everybody will not be in there gambling all day long. Yeah. That don't happen. No, they don't have no money now because I heard the church is about uh, church is about to lose its church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you make a note on the side of this, on the side of this slide, uh, real property tax and back. That's what you learn in both. Real property tax and back. Okay? Now on the flip side, we have benefits. Of course, you know, we have the survivor's benefit. And that's for the widow, water, widow, water. You happy? Yeah. Okay. So I had that flyer. It's a two-page flyer, but I forgot to print that one. A survivor's benefit, just like anything else, is not given if the marriage to the deceased took place after the deceased was awarded retirement. Get that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got it straight from the thing. A survivor's benefit is not awarded to a widow or widower if the marriage to the deceased took place after the deceased was awarded retirement benefit. So be careful when you marry him. Marry him before he's 60. Before he get Or before 55. Before 55? Not before husband, marry him before 55. Love. There you go, 55. Hold on now. Hold on now. Because you know this is based on um, contributions. So let's say the figure is good. It can't remarry. It stops. If you remarry, if you remarry, you remarry. Okay. 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 Oh, you know what it is to be a lonely. <laughs> what is your problem? Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about inheritance tax. Is there any in the Bahamas? You see that? And when you and when you do your reading in your book and you start your research. Everywhere there's a tax on everything. Everything. And if you look at by the time the Bahamas catches up with taxation policy, there's so many gaps. There's a lot of gaps. You don't remember Marvin said that, and he spoke specifically about inheritance tax the first day. What he said? All of those are little small, little tiny little amount that they can add up. No, no, no. No, but no, if you do they can manage anything. They just don't do the work. If we do inheritance, if we do inheritance tax right mm -hmm. now in the country, that means they can take us a lot of debt. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. If they tax Brent similar to loan for the inheritance that he got. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, it's, it's only a, 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 a small group of families anyway that have. No, whoever it is. Yeah. Whoever yeah. it is. Yeah. You pay a money coming in. So you got a little ten thousand dollars or whatever. Right. You pay the government a thousand. Right. And there's so some people get plenty property. Mm -hmm. Plenty. Mm -hmm. And it's it's, 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 very, it's very surprising that a quarter lady came to me it was last year. She's actually illiterate. She came to the bank. Her father left her properties in Nassau and two family islands. Big properties. Mm. She didn't know what to do with it. She can't even comprehend the size. Mm -hmm. What she want from your mom? Say what she want from your mom. Would you say how these things happen? She's coming for loan. 
you can use the property. Right. Woman has acres upon acres of land. She doesn't understand what it, she, understand. she doesn't 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 understand. She and she's not selling nothing. And people ain't ready to help oh, her. She ain't selling nothing. No, she wants to sell. But she's not. Yeah, that makes sense. You see what I'm saying? It's just very difficult to deal with a person like that. Yeah, that's hard. Why are you still talking about it? I spoke to you last Saturday, though. Are you a biker? No, no, no. No, thank God. The bikers, they ain't want me when the bikers deal with it. We don't need a biker. But, like, with these, um, but, like, a lot of these, um, families, family businesses that exist here, they'd have something called like um I think it's called a key man insurance mm -hmm. benefit. Whereas let's say Nancy Kelly and her husband, when he died, possibly they mm -hmm. had this key man insurance and then she would receive this big lump sum benefit because he was so significant mm -hmm. to the business. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? So the money just keeps growing and mm -hmm. getting larger. Mm -hmm. so they tax need, them. They, 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 exactly. Exactly. They but I'm saying if you collect on a real property tax and before you say you collect Mm -hmm. They should spend the last two years reassessing. Yes. Right. This oh. island only 21 by 7. Come on, we can do this by force. That's 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 and you have so many people that's unemployed. That's and I'm talking about just unemployed, uneducated. You had unemployed, educated people. Mm -hmm. Right? And it was before the election, the former government. They had applications on the ground like this. People who had applied to be tax assessors. Mm -hmm. That was on the FNM. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it must be all that stock. They were going through all those applications because they were going to reassess all the homes. Yeah. So when you hear them saying the paper that VAT, that the previous government had already agreed to VAT, they never announced it, but they already yeah, had the wheels in motion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? The actors, they wrote it. The people who, the people who, um, um, who the PLP let go from that, um, what do they call it, a job thing, that 20 thing, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. they were ready in real property tax doing assessments. So you wouldn't have been this far behind. Mm -hmm. But all the homes have to be reassessed right, right. and then taxed. Yeah. Then you could come and tell me we need more money. Yeah. And then you could say it's fact. And then we could say there are little small things we could do mm -hmm. to fill the gap. Mm -hmm. So right now we don't know what's outstanding because the homes have not been reassessed. How many homes you see was as big as this paper now and they all the way out there? Yeah. Everybody, That's once right. they paid off their mortgage, yeah. they yeah. had on a two-story yeah. or they had on yeah. a, a duplex. Yeah. So they move it from residential mm -hmm. to commercial. Mm -hmm. That's a different rate. Mm -hmm. They do That's it now, though. They have the appraisers go. Yeah, but the, what I'm they saying is that the high level people is too slow. It's too slow. You yeah. want us to pay. It's too slow. You want us to pay VAT. But you have not even assessed what is your debt due to you. Because you haven't so done your job. Five hundred and fifty million dollars. I don't know. I don't know where you got that from. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Let's not digress before I move on. No, but did you read the paper this morning? No, no. no. I didn't see. You need to read the papers. Which one? I didn't see this morning. We didn't see this morning. That's right. Which one? No, which one? Come eighty or yeah. yeah. Whoa! Whoa. I don't really Listen to this. Like this. This put chills in my, in my bones. Oh, I'm ready for you. Once again, the punch. I'm gonna find it. Sit with me. Listen carefully. Tell me what comes to your mind. The chills run through my eyes. I'll let you see the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Prime Minister Perry Christie will lead a ministerial delegation to the 25th intersessional meeting of the heads of government of the Caribbean community, CARICOM. <laughs> Okoman, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines mm -hmm. on March 10th to 11th, 2014. Mm -hmm. Accompanying the Prime Minister will be the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Immigration, Fred Mitchell, Minister of Labor and National Insurance, Shane Gibson, who departs for Panama after the meetings and various government aides. Traveling in advance of the Prime Minister yesterday to participate in the 16th meeting of COFA ministerial sessions on regional trade issues were Minister for Financial Services, your lecturer, Ryan Hinder, <laughs> Thai Commissioner of the CARICOM, Piceville Forbes, oh, and Acting oh, Director of Trade, Kevin Bean. You hear the money? Uh -huh. Oh, please. High on the agenda will be advancing the regional agenda for sustainable development using information and communication technologies. 
other agenda items include the economic situation facing member states and the region. Christy and his delegation depart for St. Vincent and the Grenadines tomorrow and scheduled to return to Nassau on Wednesday and various government aids. Mm -hmm. We need to know them so various aids. How many ministers I got just now? Four. I think it's four. Six. Six. And various government aids. Each one of them carry but ten. How much money that is? But you know, foreign and they don't even financial services alone. They live in a five-star hotel. Financial services and foreign affairs. None of those runs cost under $1,000. Oh, you know. And various government aids. Various government aids. Various government aids. That's a driver. Terrible. That's a shelly. Yeah, that's a shelly. 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 So what is inheritance tax? It's usually paid on an estate when somebody dies. And also sometimes payable on trust or gifts made during someone's lifetime. And this is what we're talking about now. People always giving the children property and Money and like when they get certain age, she'll say, I'll be giving you this. You tax it. Mm? Yeah, but I mean, you get it'll actually be a gift tax. Mm -hmm. Different from the conveyance and stamp duty tax. A gift tax. It'll mm -hmm. add up, trust me. Yeah. Most of the states don't have to pay inheritance tax because their value is less than the threshold. That's 325,000 pounds, and that's the rate that's going now in England. The tax is payable at 40% on the amount over this threshold, or 36% if the estate qualifies for a reduced rate as a result of a charitable donation. So who is responsible for paying inheritance tax? It's different people, but typically it's the executor or the personal representative, which means it could be the administrator. The trustees are usually responsible for paying inheritance tax on assets in or transferred into a trust. Sometimes people who have received gifts or who inherit from the deceased have to pay inheritance tax, but this is not common. Huh? Inheritance tax is only owed if the value of the deceased estate or transfer in connection with a trust exceeds the inheritance tax threshold. The executor for the PR usually pays it. The trustee usually pays for the trust assets. So when does the executor pay the inheritance tax? Usually, it is only on any assets in the deceased estate that are not held in trust. The money generally comes from the deceased person's estate. However, because the tax must be paid within six months of death, you see how they just tie it all in? You ain't got to wait forever. The government will get their money within six months. And before the grant of probate can be issued or the grant of confirmation in Scotland, sometimes the executor has to borrow the money or pay it from their own funds. This can happen if it hasn't been possible to get the money from the estate in time because it's tied up in assets that have to be sold. In these cases, the executor would have to go to someone else and have them advance the money to them. So that person can be reimbursed. So when does a trustee pay inheritance tax? Inheritance tax on transfers into trust is only necessary if the total transfer amount is above the inheritance tax threshold, which is? £1,000. It's usually payable by the person making the transfer, known as the set law, not the trustees. The trustees must pay any inheritance tax due on land or assets already held in trust. The occasions for this include a transfer out of the trust. Every 10 years after the original transfer into the trust as known as a 10 year anniversary charge. So if a trust every 10 years, you have to pay tax. When the beneficiary of the trust known as the life tenant dies, interest in possession, trust only. So when does a beneficiary or a donor has to pay inheritance tax? If the executive or the trustee doesn't pay the inheritance tax, the beneficiaries or the donors may have to pay it. And you'll see a lot of this in um, legal suits 
for when there are trusts offshore. The question always arises is whether or not the donor or the settler paid the taxes before the properties were settled within the trust. A beneficiary or donor only has to pay inheritance tax in this case if they receive a share of an estate after death, they receive a gift from someone who dies within seven years of making the gift, they benefit from assets in the trust at the time of death or receive income from those assets or they are the joint owner other than a spouse or civil partner or a property of a property. If someone gives you a gift and they do not survive for seven years after making the gift, you would only be liable to pay inheritance tax on the gift if the value of the estate, including the gift, is over the threshold. Yes, you have to pay. You have to pay it before, and then the person dies, you have to come back and get it, and you get the credit or mm -hmm. re reimburse it. Mm-hmm. You're telling back, right? Right, they say you have to sit after six months, so then, and then if the person You got to pay right up, that's what I'm saying. Right. It's just like how bad it is. What are they telling you? Pay it when you reach, pay it when you sell. Yeah, yeah. But you got to get your credit later, and you may never get you your credit, exactly. because you owe so many all other taxes. Like, I'm you always owe that. That's right. So don't look for it, you ain't get it. <laughs> <laughs> However, all the gifts made by that person during the seven years before they died add up to more than an inheritance threshold. Just as the gifts themselves, not the rest of the estate, the inheritance tax would be due on all of the gifts that brought the total above the threshold. In this case, you as a donor will usually have to pay the tax due on your gift. Someone dies and they own property as a joint tenant with you, but you are not their spouse or civil partner. Inheritance tax will be payable on their share of the joint property. The total value, of course, is above the threshold. As a surviving joint owner, you will be responsible for paying the inheritance tax. If the deceased said in their will that joint property held as tenants in common should be given free of tax, inheritance tax will come from the rest of their estate. If there is enough money in the estate to pay the tax, if there isn't, you pay it. So let's just say someone had to pay inheritance tax, they didn't have any money, and so you loan it to them. So how do you recover it? If you pay the inheritance tax due on behalf of someone else, you're entitled to clean the money back from the estate or from whomever should have paid the inheritance tax. And you can do this once probate, or confirmation has been granted, and before the estate is distributed among the beneficiaries. So you advance someone some money to pay the inheritance tax, so you better look in the newspaper to see when the notice of credit has come. Otherwise, you just get left out. They are, these companies are people especially just pay, on the payroll to look out for those stuff. Mm-hmm. The library, sorry. Mm-hmm. They, they, they look out. It's important to keep copies of all records when you pay inheritance tax on an estate or trust. And this will show you've done everything you're supposed to do if you're asked to show how you arrived at your figures by the inland revenue. So it's the same just like how bad it is. The same record keeping requirements are required, no matter what type of tax it is. You have to keep records. Records executors need to keep. Records executors need to keep. If you're an executor or PR, you must keep a copy of the bill copy of all signed inheritance tax forms and all the necessary paperwork. Inheritance and trust. The act of putting an asset, such as a money or land or building into a trust, is often known as making a settlement or settling property. This means that one asset within a trust may be for the trustee to use at their discretion and therefore treat it like a discretionary trust. Another item within the same trust may be set aside for a disabled person and treated like a trust for a disabled person. In this case, there'll be different inheritance tax rules for each estate. And that's why you see whenever you have a trust, they always ask for whatever jurisdiction you're from you to get your independent tax advice. Even though different assets may receive different tax treatment, it is always the total value of all the assets and the trusts that is used to work out whether the tax exceeds the inheritance tax threshold. 
and where the inheritance tax is due. Trust containing relevant property pay inheritance tax on transfers out of the trust and the trust's 10 year anniversary. So what I would we call relevant property? These are assets in the trust such as money, shares, bonuses, and land. Most property held in trust contain, most property held in trust count as relevant property. They are transferred out of a trust. They are transferred, they are the 10 year anniversary occurs. The only exception to this rule are when the asset is in an interest in possession and it was put there before March 22nd, 2006, or subject to a transitional um, serial interest made between the 22nd of March, 2006 and the 5th of October, 2008, or put in an interest in possession trust by the terms of a will or the rules of intestacy, or set aside for the single persons. There are so many different categories in the UK trust law. You have different rules if you're a minor, a different rule if you're disabled, a different rule if you're using the property for different reasons. Trust for bereaved minors and inheritance tax. A bereaved minor is a person aged under 18 who has lost at least one parent or step parent, and where trust is set up for the benefit of the bereaved, the assets in the trust are not regarded as relevant property. There will be no 10 yearly or extra charges as long as the assets in the trust are set aside for the exclusive benefit of the bereaved minor. The benef beneficiary becomes fully entitled to the assets in the trust at the age of 18 at the latest. So they must pay any taxes. For the disabled person, a trust set up for someone with a mental or physical disability is not a relevant property trust. And this means there's no 10 year charge. Exit charges don't apply if the asset stays in the trust and remains the interest of the beneficiary. You don't have to pay inheritance tax on the transfer of assets into a trust for a disabled person as long as the person making the transfer survives for seven years after making the transfer. <coughs> so you see how they, they actually make a distinction between a regular person, a disabled person, and the tax concession goes with it. This current VAT makes no discretion whether or not, like the guy who um, gone downtown, I forget his name, who rides a little bicycle, runs his own little business. So, right, so what do you can charge him? 15%? Is it fair? But I don't see how they charge those persons who are running the business. He might be under. He may be under recording, but, right? Not recording any records, they right? There. They just probably move something like but sometimes they say it is better for them to register and be a VAT member, which right. will get better benefits because he's going to be paying VAT when he buys things. He cannot offload that expense onto the customer. He'll have to absorb that loss himself. Yeah, the cost of everything will go up. So even if I go to you and you're not registered, right? She can't charge me VAT. But when she bought something from me to put in her shop, she had to pay VAT. So she'll have to absorb that loss. So she needs to register so she can charge you the 15% and get her VAT back. Get what? The 15%? All of that other thing I don't know. I don't, they're not planning to get, they're not, I, I personally, I don't believe that they, they cannot expect to be getting, collecting VAT all over, but I think they, it's my opinion, it's my opinion. No, they're that's why they're saying they're this trying to get all the money. They're trying to get the money out of this. The money will be definitely coming out of the world. Who have, who can afford it over that, a hundred thousand, over that, over that, over that, over that, over that. No, 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 the poor. No, the poor. The poor. The poor the because the, the passes, the, the, no, the it goes down, the expense goes down. The poor people can afford it, they ain't carrying it. They don't still care because we're consumers. Right. They're the consumers. They're the consumers. They're the consumers. They're the consumers. They're the he got to keep going up so that when he had an additional 15%. He can take and absorb it. He's going to fall. But then we're going to carry that burden. So you think Kelly's having anything? They're going to get the credit. 
They're not going to feel it. Right. The consumer is the one that's going to feel it. They're, they're going to be impacted. impacted. They're going to be impacted, but they're going to pass yeah, it on to you. Yeah, but it's still, but still, it, it, it doesn't it affect them. It, it wouldn't affect them. It wouldn't affect them. It wouldn't affect them. No, because they pass on the debt. They're entitled to credit. We're never entitled to credit. It takes a long time on the glass system to obtain your money. Yeah, it's a cash flow. Yeah, it's a cash flow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's going to be an operating cost, but when the end of the bottom line is, you can pay for it. You can pay for that. I believe Kelly said it. And no, we all pay. The consumer is the one who's going to care. Come along. All of us is the one who goes to be like that. Who will go for us? A lot of no, I think it's the upper echelon of society that we're not paying their taxes. And that's it's causing it to be like so this. So inherent tax means and I believe that them saying Kelly's definitely. When they own the shipping <laughs> company and they have their outlet. Mm -hmm. When yeah, they were when they were telling the people that hey, we bring in a hundred containers, we bring in a hundred and fifty. They're the ones and not those, paying. And we got the lax that's what and we have now. the lax oh. custom officers mm -hmm. who or the, the limited I shouldn't say the lax. In some mm -hmm. regards, some of them would slip it. Some of them can change the thing was slipping through. When you have a bond, when they have that system that's going to be audited to say, well, listen, you said you brought in 100 it's items, but you sold 150. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of the items that are still vigilant, they can do it too. They can't do the stuff. Some of them may just put Kelly's and Bob and Zion and say, hello. That's fun. How many other countries in the world that don't have this? What, fat? Yeah. Plenty countries on fat. Who don't have it? Do not oh. have fat? We're the only one left, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> We're the only Everybody one. has fat. That country didn't die. Everybody has fat. They're almost dead, though. They're almost dead. They're probably going to last their life. It's, 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 it's so hard. hard. It's so 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 hard. When you always be in a low tax, no tax jurisdiction, it's difficult to comprehend. It's hard. Especially when you've not been consuming in your own economy. We don't purchase here. Right. That's the problem. So now you can feel it more because you have to purchase here. We often compare to every all countries in the Caribbean or whatever. I agree with that. But what is cheaper? It can be cheaper than the go off. Why? Because all the custom duty is going to change. No, no. What other country in the Caribbean is geographically situated like us? Or not like us? So it's hard to compare us to other countries in the Caribbean. We ain't even think about bad impact on the Bambi Islands. They're already paying higher costs for everything just to get things there. I'm just saying. So they keep flying? In here because of where Acapella was. That's why. 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 Okay, we are reaching the last five five section now. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yo, after you, you better read the VAT legislation before you yeah. 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 read it. Oh my God! You have a crown for it. Jesus is too good. We got the thing in the tree. Oh, yeah, because the women are. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.
Remember when I spoke about different types of trust last week? I told you there are charitable trust, mm -hmm. there are fixed trust, all kinds of trust, discretionary trust, mm -hmm. maintenance trust, accumulation trust. Who should start with paying the taxes on those? The go on page 29. Inheritance tax and trust. Trust income up to a thousand pounds. If it is rent, trading and savings, it's twenty percent. If it's UK dividends, such as income from stocks and shares, ten percent. I don't know why they gave two different ones. But it's still at the same income of a thousand. And it's the same year. But it didn't make me. When a trustee makes a discretionary payment of income, he carries a tax credit at the trust rate of 45%. This means it is treated in the hands of the beneficiary as if income tax has been already paid at 45%. What is this in you? Ah, that's a lot of money, eh? The beneficiary might be able to claim some or all of the tax back if they are non-taxpayer or 20 or 40 percent taxpayer. Trustees of a discretionary trust or an accumulation trust need to make sure that they have paid enough tax to cover the tax credit given to a beneficiary. They do this using a process called the tax pool, which keeps a record of all discretionary income payments made by the trustee and the tax the trustees have paid. Page 30. Different, what, soup again? That smells like something. It smells like Trustees, different rules apply to payments to beneficiaries of settler interested discretionary trusts. <laughs> Discretionary accumulation trust and capital gains taxes. Capital gains tax is a tax on the gain and the value of assets such as shares, land, or buildings. And we have the six. A trust may have to pay. Yeah, they sell up the. A trust may have to pay capital gains tax if assets are sold, given away, or exchanged. <laughs> And they've gone up in value since we have the trust. Have the trust will only have to pay the tax if the assets have increased in value above a certain allowance known as the annual exempt amount. Mm -hmm. Trustees are responsible for paying any capital gains tax due. Beneficiaries aren't taxed on any trust gains and don't get credit for any tax paid by the trustees. Discretionary accumulation trusts and inheritance tax continues. There may be an inheritance tax charge where assets are put into a discretionary trust. A discretionary trust reaches a 10-year anniversary. Assets are taken out of a discretionary trust or the trust ceases. Or sometimes inheritance tax uses different terminology for trust. Discretionary trusts may fall within what are known as the relevant property trusts. Remember I said people with disabilities, don't fall into the relevant property. If you are a trustee paying inheritance tax on a trust, you should keep all the records and papers you use to file in the forms in case revenue agency comes to see them later. So it's just like that. If you inherited money or property, you should keep copies of any documentation showing you received an inheritance. If you are the surviving partner in a marriage or civil partnership, you should ask the executor for a document showing your deceased partner's unused threshold and keep this with your partners as it will be needed to transfer the threshold on your death. The next slide will show the calculation. <laughs> they have laws. They have rights. <laughs> the next slide will show the calculation used to work out whether the state qualifies to pay inheritance tax at a reduced rate. So I'll give you some examples, very small, but I don't want to run over to another box. So you can read this when you get home. So I've given you different versions. 
one is calculated inheritance tax only on one estate. Mm -hmm. The next one is one estate with gifts made in the seven years before the death. And one is where there's a two estate component and the other one where there is a survivorship component. And I'm done. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I yeah, they move, they, they move them. They are the glass and free Oh, no, 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 of the state, and I'll try to do it for a global context. So it may not be that long. Because it depends on what's actually out there in a bit of a problem. I don't know if you have to see the civil jurisdiction. I don't know if you have to why would I have three of these now? <laughs> <laughs> no? Exactly. Well, I have three, as I'm saying. And everything was at 17, so I have three. Uh huh. No. Yeah. No, but I'm saying he took a step with him. He should. Okay, but then you can start. Okay. You can
because you grew up black. No, but I opened. I said thanks. I said something, and I added something, and I said. I read this is just yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Any juice in there? Yes. 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 Any juice in there